And so there's nothing new about that. Uh, other cities have. But getting back to that. Then we have the sitting administration constantly doing it deliberately to make you become so disenchanted with this city. That's right. Not doing anything. That's right. And then some of you sitting there, oh, let me have them. They're not doing anything. That's, That's right. not their job to right. see that the potholes and the houses and things That's that we right. have. Yes, it is their job to appropriate monies to see that it's done and follow through on it and find out why isn't he doing this. That's the problem. And that they, as they're saying that they're designing it, whereas we will be some so disenchanted right. that we will just give up our city. That's right. Too many people have died and suffered bloodshed for us to be in the position that we are in today. I know they're turning over in their grave that we can't face our challenges and, and deal with them. And then we're going to make matters even worse. Then you're going to appoint a commission that don't even live in our city, come here to dictate to us what we should do with our city. No, I know my time is up now, and I know you're going to speak over now. Because I'm telling you, what's going on? They don't want to be the city. That's what's happening. So, I'm. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor. No, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor. On this. For the sake of time, you have 30 more seconds. Very bad one. I know, I know. But I want to say this. Don't come in here bamboozling. I want you to come back as you are here now tonight. When these three commissioners whom they have appointed, you need to come back and and, and voice your concern as to what you feel about your city and, and demand that we get service in our city. We get money from the HUD. We get money for rehabbing and all this kind of stuff. Nothing has taken place. So that's where we are. And some of you so tunnel vision is only what you hear on one side. You need to hear the whole conclusion of the matter before you make a decision. I, I don't I don't have to repeat none of what has been said. Uh, all right, all right. One second. Yes. Remember, maybe I want to speak in line over here. This is not this right here is not the thing about personal attack. We're focusing on the merger, the process, and any questions. Okay. Let's everybody, let everybody get a chance to speak first. Okay, go ahead. As as far as annexation and merger, what I've heard before me is absolutely true. University Circle already claimed much of this land with a deal with the mayor and administration. You know what? It is time. This is what behooves me. Why is the media, why is the plain deal painting our mayor as the poster child. Why haven't they really looked into the matter on why East Cleveland really is where it's at? Now, why do you keep uh, 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 painting him as a poster child? He's not a poster child. He might turn out to be the worst mayor that East Cleveland has ever had. Now, getting off of that, I stand here for the seniors. When I visited the senior housing, there are people that have been here for 50 years. 60 years, 30 years, 40 years. That's who I stand for. No one is taking these people into consideration. No one, the media, the press, no one has really heard their voice. No one has really heard their voice. You hear one to side and the only side. So my, what I encourage is that somebody from the media, media, go into the neighborhood. Talk to that man that's been here 30 years. Talk to that lady that's been here 50 years. Talk to some of the people that's in the neighborhood, not only on the hill, but down in the valley. Talk to them because they're the ones that's going to be affected by a murder. The people on the hill will be taken care of. You can, will be taken care of. But what about the streets in the valley? No one has went over there and talked to these seniors. Listen, they have an invested interest 
in this city. They've been here all their lives. They've been here 40, 50 years, yet no one has really visited them to really feel how they feel. So the question is, as I close, when this merger takes place and university come across, you can already see it happening. Mm -hmm. that, uh, uh, they've already targeted uh, uh, a superior Euclid. You see the big restaurants coming up. Uh, that's just an extension of university circle. But my question is this. When they do all this, will they forget about these little seniors here that's been here 40 years? When they do all that, will they forget about this man that's been in this city all these years? Or will the taxes that come in, will it force them out? That's what this is all about, folks. And finally, and I'm told, listen, you cannot make a poster child out of Mary Norton. Mary Norton only goal is to sell this city out. That's all, it, uh, that's all his plans have always been. If not, he would have did more. Thank you very much. Good evening, everybody. The issue that I have is the is the one thing about how the process has been going. I feel personally that this process has not involved the community totally. When that was spoken upon a long time ago, and I came to the outside meetings with Cleveland about the merger, we was able to have more dialogue than what this council and the city of Merritt and the Mayor, and Mayor Norton had an obligation city be residents to do. I look at this and I hate to hear how people use scare tactics to try to voice their opinion and try to get something done. That is unnecessary. If we can sit down here today and talk like this peacefully and listen to one another, this is how that merger situation should be done. We should not be closing having emergency meetings, having private meetings, right. or something that's involving people that have been here for years. I see that even with the situation that y'all sit on in Cleveland, that was self-interest of nothing but for y'all. Okay. That wasn't nothing for the residents in this city. And I hear Martin say that we just threw it out there. You does not throw anything out there that makes you look bad. That's and if we go to merge with the city of Cleveland, merge with the city of Cleveland, we're not talking regionalism here. We're not trying to keep our courts and have shared service from different cities to help us out. We're either going to merge or we're going to stay as a city of East Cleveland and figure out a way to rebuild this city. And one of the goodest ways to rebuild the city is start with our school system, where I always, as I used to be out here every single day fighting for these residents, if we do not have a powerful school system, we do not have a city. Who's going to move into a city if the school system is right? We got to build on our school system as well as the resources that we have in this city. We walk around this city every day. We got potholes, we got rubbish everywhere in this city. There's nothing beautiful in this city. And I would not blame that any of you council people of the mayor intended me to do this, but you did not do your job as council people and the leaders of this city to improve what is wrong with this city. It's easy for us to start now by cleaning this city up, working with one another from the different branches of the government as well as the outside of the school system to rebuild this city. You know, in my opinion, the rate that we're going, merger is the best option for us. And those who don't agree with me, that's just my opinion. But this is where we're going. Because we cannot get together as human beings to change the ways of life of everybody in the city. All self-prophecy self here is what I see. We got one.